Uh, you know me, I like to tell stories. So I want to introduce you to three of my own students who were all in one way or other underachieving by either their standards or someone else's. What I see here is underachievement does not look like one thing. You have one girl who was the top student in her whole school and she feels that she's unaccomplished. You have eighth grade Jalil who was always in trouble. He was labeled as a, as a bad student and a bad individual because he was always in trouble. Came from a background of poverty and a uh, very dysfunctional home life. He thought he was an underachiever. And then you have, you have uh, Jason who has so many things going on. He's very understanding of who he is, but at the same time he's looking for who he is. Okay, so underachievement is, can be very different. And every kid who brought you into this room today, if, even if they have the same label, they are very different inside. It is very hard for you as a teacher or counselor or whatever to trust someone who has disappointed so many people. And a lot of underachievers feel they're doing that. It's very hard for them to trust you as an adult because they've, as we would say, they've been burned before. They have had a lot of people who say they're going to do one thing and they do something else. So it takes a great degree of hope and courage for these kids to let any adult into their lives, just as a difficult, maybe difficult for you, to work with them. Why kids, as I say, do poorly on purpose. It's not that they can't do the work, it's they choose not to. It's sometimes it's lack of interest. Sometimes it's a lack of challenge. So we don't have a universal definition of where underachievement stops and achievement begins. We never talk about that with kids or their parents, and we should. But instead of looking at what they might be, we look at what they're not doing. And this is the whole attitude shift that almost we need to have in working with kids who underachieve. All I want as a kid who underachieves is somebody to see me for the person I am and could become rather than the person I'm not and will be a loser for life. And so many times it's the other way around. And now I'm going to distinguish between two very important, or I'm not going to, you're going to, between two different types of underachievers. The kids like Mark, I call him, or kids like him, a selective consumer. Under the right conditions, with the right teacher, they will perform. Stephanie is very dependent on you. She says things like you said, well, I don't think I'm good at this and I'm not sure. She's always questioning her own abilities. School resources are usually sufficient to deal with Mark. You just find another way to, wrote, to reach the talents and abilities you know he has. With Stephanie, family intervention, counseling, Mark doesn't need a lot of counseling. He needs somebody to be honest with him. These are what I call the five C's that kids are looking for. All right, I don't want to give kids power, but I want to give them some autonomy in thinking. This education piece is important enough for me that I need to be proactive. I need, I need to be the one because the teacher can't read my mind. So this 10 tips really has helped kids along the way. Why not ask them these questions? Where in your life are you letting your intelligence show? I love number three. What would happen if you started achieving? Everything changes. Expectations, are you ready for those? Yeah. All right, let me go back to the kids we started with. So thank you for taking the time to respond to those emails so long ago. I was just a crazy, confused kid. You really helped me figure out where I needed to go. The school system didn't offer me any guidance to personal development. A smart guidance counselor would have been wonderful. Someone to engage me in thought about life. That's who you are. That's how you can be for your Jasons, your Stephanies, your Marks, whoever they are.